chances are you found this video because you're looking for a tried and tested garden pond plan because you want everything. Well, in this video, I talk about seven key elements to a garden pond that has been proven to work all over the world. So sit back and enjoy the presentation. Hi guys, it's Mark from AnyPond.com. We're a trusted resource in the UK for ponds and water features. Today, I'm really excited because I'm introducing the new content cabin here at Pond College. We're based in the Midlands in the UK, in England, in Northamptonshire, so we will be putting on lots of events. In the description is a link to the event, so if you want to come to Pond College and train in the sandboxes, in the waterfall boxes, or come and be inspired by the college gardens, you're more than welcome. But today's video is all about the Aquascape Ecosystem Pond. What I've done inside the content cabin here is I've done a great big illustration on the wall for the difference in a traditional pond and an aquascape ecosystem pond. So we've got the numbers. We've got underneath the frog, we've got number one, which is the mechanical filtration. Over on this side, we've got number two, which is the waterfall filtration where the biological activity happens. Then three, We've got the circulation system, four is pipework and plumbing, five is the liner and the underlay and the overlay sometimes, six is the rocks and gravel that make up um, and also number seven is plants and fish. So let's go through those now, we're starting with number one, filtration. So let's look at the mechanical filter on an aquascape ecosystem pond. So number one is all about the proper sized surface skimmer or skimming system as we like to call it. What we've got here is we've got a DIY version which is affordable and as you can see it's a fairly small unit. This particular um, unit comes with a lot of the DIY kits. When we're building um, you know, like the small ones up to sort of like an 8x10, which is the pond behind me, which is real life. So this particular pond will cope with an 8 foot by 11 foot ecosystem pond, 2 foot deep. So the Aquascape 200, here's the box here for more demonstration purposes. As you can see, let's see if I can hold it close to the camera. This is where the skimmer is located. It's located on the side of the pond it's where the pump is located and what this actually does is it removes the mechanical waste off the surface you've got a debris basket in a lot of them or a debris net and it removes the leaves it removes anything mechanical out of the system so what it actually prevents is it prevents organic waste building up in the actual pond itself so traditionally speaking, most people will be aware of a pump on the bottom of a pond and then that feeds the filtration system where the pump in the skimming system is actually located on the side of the pond so it's a lot easier for you to get access to it. So a lot easier for you to remove the mechanical waste. If you have a pump on the bottom of the pond, it's a lot harder for you to remove the mechanical waste that doesn't pass through the pump. Most of the time you get sort of like six to eight mil particles that will go through the pump, but leaves, debris, twigs, anything that gets blown in, all gets sucked down to the bottom, which actually is um, a disadvantage over the skimming system on the Aquascape Ecosystem Pond. So that's the mechanical stage. Now let's go over to the biological stage where all the bacteria and the colonies live. So now we've come over to the other side of the pond, which needs to be absolutely opposite the mechanical filtration. So now we're on the other side and we're looking at the biological stage to the filtration system. So what this means is the mechanical filtration is removing highly oxygenated water off the surface rather than at the bottom of the pond, then it percolates up through the waterfall filter. The waterfall filter not only provides a lovely waterfall back into the pond, creating more oxygen after the biological stage, but also it um, supplies 
or gives lots of room for colonies of beneficial bacteria. What colonies of ba beneficial bacteria want is they want surface area. So if you think of the, a traditional pond, you've got surface area on the bare liner or the concrete or whatever, the fiberglass on the actual pool. Or in an ecosystem pond, you've got a lot more in the actual pond with the gravel, the sand, the substrate, the plant leaves, the stems, everywhere there's a surface area, even the surface tension, you've got microorganisms that live on that tension, that surface film. So providing lots of surface area for the bacteria, it's absolutely fantastic for removing that excess nutrients. So what you've got is you've got another um, couple of different types of waterfall filter. You've got the affordable one, um, which is fantastic for your um, DIY ponds or whether you're trying to upgrade a traditional pond. You can literally have this on the side of a traditional pond. It's not got a detachable spillway. It actually comes with the, um, with the big lip so you can attach it to any preformed pond, fiberglass pond, concrete pond, without having to um, attach it to the liner. Where my one of choice is the professional grade. This is the actual, the small one and it's got a detachable face plate. Um, the reason why I like the detachable face plates is because you can rock up right up to the front of the actual waterfall filter. I'm not gonna talk about the differences between the waterfall filters, but I'll do that in another video. So now let's go over to number three, the circulation system. So now we come back over to the skimming system, which we looked at right at the start. We're looking at the pump. Now the pump is located on the side of the pond, so it's very, very easy and efficient on the system. One, like I've touched on before, it's very easy for you to get out and maintain. You don't even need to get your hands wet sometimes because you can close the skimmer door on some certain models and then let the pump pump out the water and then you can get in there and, uh, and clean it without even getting your hand wet or trying to fish at a pump at the bottom of a pond is an absolute nightmare. I've even had cases where I've gone out to ponds and the, the pump's actually been rocked in at the bottom of the pond, which is a complete no-no. Um, but we all, we've all got to learn, which is one of the reasons why I'm putting out videos like this and hopefully you're enjoying this. If you are, put it in the comment section below um, You know if these videos are helpful. So we're talking about a submersible pump inside the Aquascape Ecosystem Pond, inside the skimmer, which is a lot more efficient than having one on the outside or in the bottom because it doesn't have so much pipe work to go through. So depending on what kit you get, now we're talking about pipe work. So depending on what type of um, kit you go for or whether you're ordering it yourself, depends on whether you go for the suction hose which is normally on the affordable kits, or you go for the pressure treated solvent weld as a professional, my pipe work of choice. So here we go, I've come back out now because we actually use a flexible rubber membrane. So number five is the liner and underlay. So let's talk about the liner and underlay. Which liners do I recommend? Well. What I recommend is a rubber liner, not a PVC or plastic or um, you know, any type of brittle. I don't use concrete anymore because there's two types of concrete. Concrete that has cracked or concrete that will crack because the earth is moving. So I actually use a flexible liner. And in the UK, we go by the metric system. So it's a one millimeter thick rubber liner. Also with the rubber liners, you want the cheap insurance of putting down a membrane. So this membrane actually protects the liner from underneath and you've probably seen it in some of my other videos where we actually use an overlay on top of the liner as well. So we're protecting the liner from underneath. So it's like a liner sandwich between two pieces of membrane. And then we touch on number six, which is the rocks and gravel. Now, the reason why I've come transitioned straight from the pond liner to the rocks and gravel is the rocks and gravel also protect the pond liner. So if you've got pets that want to get in, if you want to get into the pond, the liner needs to be protected. 
So the rocks and gravel are actual protection of the liner as well because that protects it from the UV rays. So if you think of barbecue furniture or um, patio furniture, the sun will deteriorate the covers. You've probably seen it where it's sunny, it deteriorates the color. Well, the rubber liner is deteriorated by the UV. Now, obviously, when you've got it underneath the water, the water's protecting the liner from the UV. But you might have seen ponds in the past. I've seen thousands of ponds with plastic liners that are exposed to the sun and the sun is deteriorating the liner very, very quickly. So having the rocks and gravel, you're protecting the liner. You know, in Northamptonshire, we have um, a caddis fly larvae that actually latches onto the surface and feeds. Um, I know I'm going off tangent, but there's insects that will chew the rubber liner inside. So having rocks and gravel, you provide the beneficial bacteria, like I talked about in the biological waterfall filtration, you've got the surface area on the rocks and gravel. Also, you've got liner protection. So now we come on to the last part of the Aquascape ecosystem pond, which is number seven. So what I've done in here is I've combined the fish and plants. So let's talk about the fish to start with. Not only do they provide a, an enjoyable pet to have, um, if I was a fish, I would love to live in an Aquascape ecosystem pond rather than um, a fish pool because there's a lot more going on. The fish actually reduce the maintenance of an ecosystem pond because they graze on the gravel, they feed on the bottom, they turn over the rocks and the gravel. So as long as you don't put too much rocks and gravel in, they can turn it over and they can actually um, keep the pond clean. So having fish in an aquascape ecosystem pond, it actually keeps um, the waste in solution because they're grazing along. If you imagine, um, you know, pigs or chickens or cattle out in a field, not in an intense farming scenario, that's more of a fish pool or a fish farming where you can have actually more fish than water, but I'm digressing. It's more about the free range pork or the free range cattle or the poultry. It's much better for the fish to live in an interactive, um, you know, it's all about enrichment and an aquascape ecosystem pond, it's fantastic for the fish and it's also fantastic for the pond owner because they help with the maintenance. Not only grazing on the gravel, but keeping that waste off the floor of the pond. Now we talk about the plants and what the plants do is they remove the excess nutrients out of the water that you can't physically remove with a net. You can't physically remove with a biological stage. It's more, they're removing the nitrates, which is um, the, the end product, let's say, of the nitrogen cycle. So by harvesting the plants, whether it's um, edible plants, whether it's ornamental plants like the water lilies, by harvesting the foliage, you're actually removing that nutrients from the system. If you leave the nutrients on and they die back down, you're just leaving the nutrients in the pond. So the plants provide a fantastic reduce maintenance element and also that splash of color these ones here they're actually superimposed so yes you can get water lily flowers this big but not in this sort of size pond here in the uk because this would be more of a tropical lily but i've just put it down as illustration but the lilies they don't compete with algae for food because the algae removes nutrients from the water column submerged plants or floating plants, anything that hasn't got roots in a substrate are competing with the algae for food. I'll touch on this in other videos, but water lilies, they provide shade. So it's a fantastic having um, a light and dark areas to the pond because it creates depth, because it creates mystery. It's a fantastic place for, um, you know, invertebrates. And also we touched on it earlier about a surface area on the plants, on the stems. So the plants are a vital part as well as the fish. So hopefully you've enjoyed this information video. I've enjoyed putting it together. I've enjoyed this illustration. It's a fantastic opportunity for you to come. If you come to Pond College, if you're able to come, if you've got the time, 
we've got Pong College. So come on over to Pong College and hopefully we can educate and inspire each other. And if you're still here, put it in the comments section below what you've enjoyed, what, you've, what you think I should have um, touched on, what you want to see. If you haven't got a YouTube account, it's no problem. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you watching and being inspired because you guys inspire me. So my name is Mark, the Pond Advisor, and I'm here to support you. Dream, plan, and enjoy ponds and water features. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Um...